these curious kids. I'm Suzanne. Hi, I'm Grace. Today we're making a very cool cake. A tie-dye cake! Yay! Yay! So Grace, why do you want to make a tie-dye cake? Because I really like colors and colors are really fun, but I also really like tie-dye. And tie-dye and colors are basically sort of the same thing. And tie-dye shirts are really fun, but what's even cooler? Tie-dye cake. Cake is good and it's colorful. We looked on Pinterest for ideas on how to make a tie-dye cake, and we found several. There's links to three options below. One of the options had frosting bags, and we don't want to waste our Ziploc bag, and we also don't have any frosting bags, so... Yes, and one of the styles that we looked at looked more like rocks than tie-dye, in my opinion. <laughs> it was cool, but not quite what we wanted. Yeah. So, we picked a bullseye pattern and that we're going to swirl a little. To make tie-dye cake, you will need white or vanilla cake mix prepared, food coloring, bowls to divide cake mix, we have six, spoons, a cake pan properly greased or lined with parchment paper, toothpicks, a spatula, hot pads, a cooling rack, icing, yay! We've made the cake batter ahead of time because it's just a vanilla cake mix. Then we put it into six equal bowls and then we're going to put food coloring in them to make it red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple cake mix. Right, there's six colors, so you can do three and I'll do three, and manage any chaos. So Grace, what colors do you want to do? I want to do red, green, and purple. Okay, so I'll do the orange and the yellow and the blue then. Stick, it is a really good idea to put some parchment paper on the bottom to help it come out easily. And if your parchment, if your pan is not nonstick, put some around the sides as well. The easiest way to get your paper the right size, like this, is to take a piece of parchment paper, lay it out, take your pen. Where'd my pen go? I need my pen back. Take a pen or a pencil. And just trace around the bottom. Don't worry, you're actually going to cut the pen marking off so it's not going to be in your food. And it's kind of a rough guide. Then you're just going to cut out your piece of parchment paper. Does not have to be completely perfect. The idea is to make this easier to get out of the pan. So, does not have to be perfect, just has to be basically the same size and shape. And remember, the outside of your pan is a little bit bigger than the inside of your pan, which is why you can cut the ink off and then have it fit, even though you've used ink to dry your line. If it's a square pan, sometimes you can just kind of bend it around the bottom of the pan on the outside and then cut it. Or uh, depending on your pan, sometimes I just leave it and have parts of go like in an X so that it goes up the sides on both sides. Then you're going to take it and you're going to put it so that the way that it's curling is face down so that it stays up. You look beautiful. And now comes the fun part. We have the baking pans. You ready to pour? Yes. Okay. Our oven is preheating to either 350 degrees if you're in Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. The baking pans are lined with parchment paper and we're going to pour the batter one color at a time into a pan. Half of each color goes into one pan. So, start with the red, because we're doing a rainbow. Pour about half of it in, in the center. Put it, pour it in, in the center. Straight into the center. Is that enough? Is that half of what was in the bowl? Okay, we'll pour some into this bowl. Is that enough? Yeah. We're, ultimately, all of the red is going to go in these two bowls, so just try and get it in there evenly. Okay, if you feel like you need to add some to the other one, you can. So once she gets the red in, 
we're gonna, oh gosh, we're gonna let it spread out just a little bit and then we're gonna pour the next color in. Make sure you're pouring carefully and try and be into the center. I started of pouring to the side. The pan as much as possible. Okay, Grace is just almost done with the red and then we're gonna continue in rainbow order. Don't worry about that, we can wipe it off. Don't lick your fingers. Okay, have you got all the red? Okay, so now I'm gonna start with the orange. No, you're not. I'll, let me do it in one pan, you do it in the other. And this is kind of like what they do when they're doing hydro dipping, like on our favorite YouTube channel as That's a family. About science. Which is? T-K-O-R. T-K-O-R. They've done quite a bit of different hydro dip experiments over the years, and we have thoroughly enjoyed watching all of them. We will put a link to their channel down below. Mine and my brother's favorite people from there is Grace and Joshua, because that's our names. We can stop here with the color pattern as a rainbow, but to add to the tie-dye look, <laughs> we're going to pull a toothpick through the batter. This is not a toothpick, but I'm going to do... I'm going to bring... And like this, and like this, and like this. We're trying to make a bit of a star pattern. Like this, and like this. Wait. And you could pull from the edges in. Mommy, too. look! Look at this. Wait, where's the camera? <laughs> it's beautiful. So on mine, I'm doing a little bit of pulling in and out. And on mine, I'm swirling it. Don't swirl too much or it'll get muddy. So each one of us is going to have a slightly different look to our cake. Yours looks like a flower. Yeah, mine does. And yours looks like top dye. You can see that we've actually done two different patterns. And just like with tie dye and cloth, there's lots of different ways you could do this. You could that do one's a, mine. You could do a swirly pattern like what Grace did. You could do a flower like what I did. You could come out from the center on all of them and have more of a star. Any of the possibilities you can think of, you can do. Just remember that the more you swirl it, the muddier the colors will get. Mm. It's ready to bake. I agree, it looks really cool. I'm gonna open the door and put the cakes in and then we're gonna set the timer for, I think it was 18 minutes, but we'll check the bag. The bag. Well, it was a cake mix. Since we have two, since we have two cakes, and only one shelf. I'm putting one in one corner and one in the other, and hopefully they will fit like that. makes it easier to put the fondant on. So, how do we ice the cake? Look at that. See that pattern? Isn't that cool? That is my cake. 
think that's mine. Yeah, that's that's Mama's cake. So we've actually flipped it over on top of itself so that we can not have to waste all that cake. Mm, I yeah. wanted to eat it. Yeah, well, this one I'll cut in a way that you can eat it. <laughs> so. What if we put this one on the top there because you're rounding it more? Yeah. I just had an idea. And this one I think is Gracie's. Can I eat this? Not on camera. This one is Gracie's and we'll have it be our top layer. Stop now. Bye.